Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yes, today it's going to be slightly even more underproduced because my audio is not going to be the same as it normally is because I'm just using my, my iPhone. The whole point of this video today, I do these probably hmm, once a year. I think I skipped one year, but this is kind of the state of the union for the Hold and Modify Amiga Cave. And so for those of you out there that want to spend money on Amigas and, and buy this stuff and, you know, maybe you're going to mod them, maybe you're going to get them recapped. The whole point is after you purchase them and you spend the money doing that, how long are they going to last? Are they going to... What, what's going to happen once you get them home and fire them up? And how reliable are they going to be every single time? So here we go. So the first Amiga, we are going to go ahead and evaluate and see if it audits and passes the power on test. It's been a while since I've fired up the good old CD32. It's It's been quite a while, actually. The CD32 is connected to this amazing Dell monitor via S video, all right, which gives the, uh, you know, this LCD panel almost a CRT softness look. I love that about that. So let me go ahead and fire this up. All right, so is the CD32 going to boot? The last time I used it was when one of my friends visited and we played uh, a bunch of Amiga games on this using the uh, AGS system. I love that that thing exists, by the way. If we can look down here, oh, I hear, I hear something, but I don't see anything. All right, so it was a simple, just I had to press the input button to switch over to S video. Good old S video, there it is. Yes, yes, Amiga Game Selector, still working. I know sometimes I call it the Amiga Game System, but yeah, Amiga Game Selector, still working. CD32, look at this, just sitting here. You know, I haven't used it in a while, but, and yes, my AGS is, Kind of out of date. I think I'm going to mine version of what? 2.3? All right. Well, that's not terrible. I mean, 2.3? Come on. It works. It works out of the box. You really don't need anything. So let's go over to the next system. Oh, yes. The next. Look at all this amazing, fun, just Amiga stuff. I have all my software. You know, yeah, of course, all the software, all the software is available digitally with, with our, you know, our GoTex or just any other method we can get them in there. But yeah, this is always fun. You know, I did a video on the hand scanner. That thing is, uh, it's not, it's not good. It's not good. And yes, the Wicco con command control is so cool. I love the Wicco command control. Oh, look at this. Sealed in the box. Toaster Revolution VHS from New Tech. Now, New Tech, of course, does not exist anymore. They, uh, they were finally dissolved. The original toaster slash lightweight people. An amazing thing to get from, uh, Dr. Chris. Chris Edwards Restoration. Thank you so much, buddy, for that. That was awesome. Here we go. Amiga 2500. Is the Amiga 2500 going to turn on and work? Now, for those of you that haven't been paying attention or don't subscribe to my channel, the Amiga 2500 has a progressive peripherals and software 68040 in it, 28 megahertz. So it's a little weird because I did put the 3.2 ROMs in this 2500. And ever since doing that, it's a little hit and miss on the boot. All right, so I've gone ahead and flicked it on, and we've got the uh, RGB to HDMI working. The power light is just flashing green over and over again. Oh, shit. That's interesting. So the 2500 is definitely stuck in a boot loop. The 3.2 ROMs on here, yeah, there's some, there's some, you know, it can be kind of hinky, a little hinky. So guess what? Here you go. I, you know, last time I used this, it worked great. I turned it on and it worked great. I've left it dormant for about four months. Yes, four months. And uh, it's stuck in a boot loop. Things you can expect. If you if you invest in Amigas and you buy them and you upgrade them and you mod them and you recap them, just know that <laughs> you may get a visit from the guru. There it is. <laughs> yeah, okay, next. All right, this one is really, really my pride and joy. I mean, I love, look, I have all these other awesome ones too, but this replicates my original Amiga setup. And again, if those of you that subscribe to my channel, you may remember when Dr. Chris came out and uh, 
fixed up this uh, GVP hard drive here. So let's see what happens here. This is a base Amiga 500 with 1.3 ROM. Let's turn it on and see, well, first off, let's turn it on and see if it works. And also my 1080, is this 1080 still working? I don't know, it's been a while since I've turned it on. So the first thing you need to do though, is you gotta turn the hard drive on before you turn the 500 on. So come over here and let's turn on the hard drive first. Boom, hard drive, light, power. Let's turn on the 1080. Oh, it makes that CRT whine. Okay, and now let's turn on the old 500 and see what happens. Now I have, of course, installed the workbench onto the hard drive, so it should just boot right up. It's been many, many, many months. That's why I'm making this video. Yay! All right, so we've got works, works. Eh, eh, no, it doesn't work. All right, so that's good news. Investment justified. Yes, I really do like this system, though. This is pretty awesome. This is my original Amiga setup, and uh, <laughs> it's just fun. I like pull these games off the walls you see here, the floppies, and I just stick it in here and just install them and play. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. All right, now we're getting down to the more modern big box Amigas and the, uh, you know, little, little not so big box Amigas, but more modern. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, so again, those of you that subscribe, I recently uh, fixed the floppy drive in this 4000. It was not working. I cleaned it thoroughly, did all the things, and now it works. Yay. What I want you to pay attention to is that once I turned it off and then turned it back on, look at the hard drive light. It will start flickering right away. Yeah, that's what this 4000 does. That's just, this, is, this is what this 4000 requires. It requires you to power it on and then turn it off and then quickly turn it back on again. If you turn it off and you wait too long and then turn it back on, you're screwed. It won't boot. So <laughs> it's just one of those... Uh, I don't know, one of those Amiga things, you know, for old systems, but here you go, there it goes, boots up. Now you've seen this system a lot recently in some of my videos, I use this 4000. This has the uh, Kazanov 64 uh, 68060 card in it, it has his like, 256 meg expansion RAM card in it. It's it's amazing, it's got all the things. I, I love this machine, it's, it's so awesome. So yeah, it still works, here we go. My uh, Holden Modify, Amiga checkup video that I do every year, kind of. Uh, we've got this, so works, works, doesn't work, works. Let's move on to the last two, shall we? By the way, um, I do have an Amiga 1000 and an Amiga 600 in the closet over here. They do work, but I can't set them up right now because as you can see, I am completely out of space. All right, so here we are with the 1200. Let's go ahead and turn her on. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that chunky arm with the weird freckles and marks on it. Okay. Boom. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. It's going to boot, isn't it? Please tell me it's going to boot. And yes, it boots. It works. It's happy. Okay. That's another one. Hello, Mr. Lemons. Here we go. Lemons? Lemons? Oh, don't do that. I'm going to get sued if I say that. Hello, Mr. Lemmings. Lemmings, I love you. Well, that just leaves one more computer. Now, here we are with the Amiga 3000 in the Hold and Modify Cave. Is it going to uh, boot? And uh, by the way, a big shout out. Mitten Squad, love you, man. Rest in peace. Here we go. Let's go ahead and fire up the old 3000. Push the button. Unlike the 4000, the 3000 most of the time actually just turns on and boots and starts. Yeah, there you go. See, look at that. Yes, there it is. All right, so this 3000 has a real Picasso 4 in it. It also has a real Phase 5 68060 in it with like 128 megs of RAM. I also have a Kazanov 64 256 megabyte expansion RAM card for it. The same thing I have in the 4000 over there. I have not put it in yet because, you know, I have a day job and I'm busy. But yes, here we go. 3000 looking beautiful. Picasso 4 looking beautiful. So there we have it, 3000 is booting after six months to a year, and the 1200 boots, and the 4000 boots, the 500 boots, the CD32 boots, the Amiga 2500 does not boot. And I'm pretty certain that the uh, 1000 and the 600 in the closet will boot because they're actually really robust and, and basic and never had a problem with them before. But anyway, Thanks for hanging out and just watching some 
dude, you know, do his uh, Amiga flex, showing off all his Amigas. I do own many guns, by the way, so if anyone's going to come storming the castle, we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be really wild. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, I guess I'm uh, done with this video.